Are you bored of the standard battle royale? Formulaic, often slow for long periods, punishment heavy for those that actually want to play in an expansive manner? Well, a new option has hit the market, now in full release and totally free. This first person shooter battle royale merges key aspects of such a BR with those of a typical arena shooter, dialing up the pace of the game to the max. This game is fast and providing a truly different feeling experience, full of thrills and spells and once again, yes, it's totally free on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. This is Hyperscape. Videos such as this are powered by the Board of Awesome. Thank you to all of the heroes who support the channel on Patreon, including new patron Christopher Navarro. And our current goal of hitting 50k subs is just around the corner, currently sitting at 49.4k. If you're new or enjoy the video and want to see more, hitting that subscribe button is dearly, dearly appreciated. Thank you very much. Hyperscape is like no battle royale I've ever played before, which is great because I'm one of those people that got pretty bored of the BR scene dominating the market. Hyperscape is faster than all of the other BRs I've ever played and feels much more like a traditional first person shooter. So today, my sole aim is to help you to decide if it's worth your time. And a massive point that supports that is what I mentioned twice at the very start of the video. It's free. You'll lose absolutely nothing for trying this game out. It released on the 11th of August 2020 for the first time on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and now fully on PC after a previous PC beta. And this all kicks off Season 1 of Hyperscape, including a new gun, a new ability and other changes, which I'll cover later after going over all the details of this game. Produced by Ubisoft and developed by Ubisoft Montreal, who've been involved in Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six and a whole host of other big franchises, well this is no indie studio game. It has a massive pedigree behind it, despite the free-to-play price tag that some large studios still avoid. If monetization is a big thing for you, well there are no loot boxes. The game has a store which features direct purchases rather than rolling the dice to see what you get. Yes, you can spend real-world money if you so wish, it's up to you, and there's a battle pass. But all aspects are cosmetic based, there's no pay-to-win stuff to be found. Now some key aspects of the gameplay. Well, any progress you make is on your specific account, meaning you can access the same progress and items on any platform as it's all saved to your Uplay account. Although cross-platform play itself isn't yet available, it is said to be on the way. You can play solo or in squads, uh, you win by being the last person or squad standing, or by holding the crown for 45 seconds if you're playing Crown Rush, which is a fresh new feel to things. Uh, the crown spawns in the final zone and everyone is left competing to get hold of it. There's no closing ring in Hyperscape, instead different pops of the map become become dead zones and you have to abruptly leave before you die, which adds a new flavour to proceedings. You drop into the map in a pod with just a melee weapon, and the map itself is smaller and more close quarters than you're likely used to from other BRs, which sets an early marker for the playstyle and pace that's going to form on Hyperscape. The gameplay is hugely driven by parkour elements, yes movement is a big part of this game, with slides, double jumps, scaling objects, utilising jump pads and such all being present, with verticality features prominently, but in a less restrictive way than in say Warzone, the high ground is powerful but the ability to quickly reclaim it and such like keeps things from feeling stale and slow. The opportunity to outplay your opponent with movement is there. This overall is a game that rewards high skilled play, whether it be movement based, raw aiming or quick thinking and action on the fly, but is still very much pick up and play friendly for a casual market, a great mix of a low skill floor with a high skill ceiling, fun for casuals and rewarding for more dedicated players. You'll be using 11 different guns, along with your melee weapon, at launch, with no doubt more coming later. Currently you'll find the new semi-auto rifle, the Dragonfly, added in with Season 1, as well as an SMG, an assault rifle, a shotgun, an auto-aim pistol, which functions something like the smart pistol from Titanfall, a revolver, a bolt-action sniper rifle, a grenade launcher, a plasma launcher, an energy cannon and
and a minigun. So this is a solid mix of weaponry and you can carry any two at a time along with your melee weapon, so expect to see a lot of the traditional arena shooter pairings of a solid primary weapon like an assault rifle or SMG, paired with a more specialised option such as a sniper rifle or a grenade launcher, but with the options used in crazy combinations like plasma launcher and grenade launcher. Oh and all of the guns aside from the explosive damage ones are hit scan, no leading your shots, what you shoot is what you hit. Now the game is also highly highly ability focused. These abilities are called hacks and there are again 11 of them available at launch. These include but are not limited to the new magnet hack, a reveal hack that reveals all enemies within an area, a ball hack that literally puts you inside of a huge ball, a wall hack which actually isn't a wall hack that you're probably thinking of, instead it spawns a huge wall in front of you, kind of like Mei from Overwatch, and yeah, lots more. You can also pair any two of these hacks, which provides you with a lot of combinations and opportunity for creativity and expression. Looting for the guns and hacks is also super streamlined and easy, with less time spent focusing on what you're picking up. In fact, there's only guns, ammo and hacks to be found right now. It's very simple and you can pick up multiple versions of the same gun or hack, which progressively makes that gun stronger. All you have to do is keep picking up that kind of gun until it reaches its max power version. All of this is really, really geared towards speed. More action, more fun. Less time doing the boring aspects of a battle royale. And this high tempo play is also created via other aspects, such as regenerating health rather than heal packs, so you don't have to be scared about going back and challenging while low health, you don't have to sit and camp it out because you don't have heals, and you're incentivized to commit to kills when possible so the enemy doesn't simply heal back up again in a few seconds. There's also infinite sprints and enemies are easy to spot, which makes the game less taxing on your eyes and indeed brain than some other BRs. Plus players even leave a red trail when sprinting. Everything is geared towards getting into the action quickly and staying in it. Less downtime, less time worrying about inventory management. And this is even apparent in how you lose and gain squad mates. In Hyperscape you don't get downed. When you die you become an echo, unable to affect and interact with the world but you can still move around, ping things and provide information for your team. Your value to the squad doesn't end just because you died and you can be brought back via respawn tokens, which players don't have to go and search out, you pick them up from defeated enemies. So again, less time spent thinking about how to get your teammate back and whatever, and more time spent actually playing and taking on the enemy. With a simple means to return your squad mate to the fight, everything is really focused upon action and fun. And this is taken to the next extreme by events that take place around the map, such as low gravity events, infinite ammo events, and more. The really, really clever part of this is that it's all integrated with Twitch chat, as Twitch viewers can vote for which event takes place. This is so smart, not only for engagement, but also the immersion of feeling like you're actually taking part in the world of Hyperscape. And that's because it's set in a sci-fi scenario. You're in a virtual world, Neo Arcadia in 2054. Think Ready Player One kind of setup, and the audience is watching you and voting for those events. It's a really great concept. And the aesthetic and art style of the map, and indeed the game as a whole, takes strides away from the cartoony graphics that some people simply don't like, from say Fortnite for example, so for some of you that might be a big plus point for Hyperscape. And so overall, I think this game is an absolute breath of fresh air for the battle royale market, with much more of a focus upon traditional first person shooter play, high pace and intensity. If you're bored of battle royales but you love arena shooters, this may well be something that brings you back, or perhaps you've never enjoyed a battle royale but you like this style of play, again, this could be a great new experience for you, especially as it's free to play. I will say though that despite its unique aspects, it is still a battle royale at heart, so if you absolutely can't stand this genre at all, then Hyperscape isn't guaranteed to change that. I can't recommend it if you just don't like the immediacy of being knocked out without warning, or sometimes the opportunity to react. That's just part and partial of playing a BR, as is the luck of the draw of what loot you find. But overall, I'd simply characterise Hyperscape as being fun, pure fun, which makes it an easy game for me to recommend to anyone to try, as long as they don't just hate the concept. I will add though that there were some pretty bad bugs in the beta, I haven't experienced them in the full release, but just be on the lookout for them in case. The game has just come out, remember. So with that covered, let's go quickly through the changes that have been introduced with the full release, for those of you who played the beta. In addition to the new weapon and new hack, they've reversed the blanket hacks nerf from version 0.5, while still retaining some of the balancing adjustments. They've fixed the power imbalance of patch version 1.5 for weapons, whilst retaining a portion of the accelerated TTK. They've reintroduced the one-shot kill capacity of the bolt-action sniper, and we'll be monitoring how this plays out in coming weeks. Player health regen delay
delay is now 5 seconds instead of 10, but time to recover to full health is unchanged, there's improved and more progressive critical health feedback, full fusion items now only spawn from chests and crates, they've added a report tool but currently only for players in your squad, further tools for reporting will no doubt be on the way to try to tackle cheaters, there's also a scramble name option now for streamers or those who wish to hide who they are, and new limited time game modes will be coming throughout the season, and that is my coverage of Hyperscape. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I hope it helps you to decide if it's worth your time. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more reviews, gaming video essays and gameplays, hit the like button and subscribe, it's really appreciated, and all the links to my social media including Patreon, Twitter where I post all the time, my Discord server etc can be found in the description and my pinned comment, and with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I will see you next time, laters. 111,000 signatures for continued content support. Already we can see the massive backing that this game has from its community and thus can extrapolate just how large the feeling of disappointment and potential anger was 